everybody. Flat out bank angling. So this morning I went fishing with my friend Bob. That's where I didn't want it. Had a bite on a fluke earlier. I just thought it was a bluegill playing with my bait. So I didn't set the hook. Got it to the top of the water and saw it was about a pound and a half bass. So I kind of kicked myself for it. Because he felt the hook, so I, I kept throwing in after that. And uh, he either wasn't biting it or moved on, so I figured it. I'd move down and do something else. Right now I'm throwing the, uh, the Ned Rig from Venom Moors. And I got that on the, uh, the Revo rocket, which I think it's probably too light for this. I should be finessing this. I we got one. about a pounder My friend Bob, yeah. he caught a bunch of bluegill I brought in one bass about a pound and I lost one it was about a pound and a half but it's afternoon I got a couple hours before I go out to dinner and I'm going to try fishing this spot here I haven't fished for a while I have caught a two pounder out of here and nothing else so it's been a while since I've been here let's get after it
Turtle. I don't know. I haven't been here for a while. Yeah. There's usually a lot of turtles. Okay, everybody. So you can see I had to switch places because I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. They don't like your regular everyday anglers. But how asinine do you have to be to walk up right where somebody's fishing and stand right next to them on both sides? But to tell you the truth, that's a bunch of BS. I don't know why someone would do that. I mean, even common sense would say, give a person room, you know? Hey, Hook'em Dino, I hope you're watching, because I'm using something that you may not remember doing, I don't know or not, but I sent you a few things that I got in an outsider tackle box a long time ago, and you sent me a couple baits, a little bag of uh, different colored Sankos, and right now I have one of your Sankos on. Last time I caught a fish out of here was a couple trips ago. I haven't been here since last year, but uh, the last time I caught a fish out of here, I was using just a black and blue. Beaver type bait. I've tried to crank baits and other things in here. I've never caught any other fish out of here than that one. I mean, it's shallow right now, but I'm at the deeper end of this lake. It's only, it's more like a pond, I guess, but they call it a lake. So I got uh, a wacky rigged Sanko. I don't know if it's actually a Yamamoto or not. But it's a uh, green pumpkin top with 
black and red flakes and a chartreuse bottom which is actually one of my favorite colors of different things to use the water's not too dirty it's a little bit of clear going on it's probably more of a stain but it's not totally clear I can see right out in front of me here probably about I'm gonna say a foot and a half maybe two foot down it's not crystal clear it's got a little coloring to it fish over here playing around so I figure maybe I think it's a fish it's a lot of bedding going on with bluegills these days I can't believe how long these bluegills are actually spawning the bedding Pretty sure you can hear me pretty well, but it is windy out here. But knowing that it, uh, something was on that, try it again. I switched over to a Z-Man, a Lastech TRD worm, the same color that the Sanka was, that the fish was chasing, or whatever you want to call it. But I'm going, still going with the Ned Rig. I think we got him. Here he is. Little guy. Still fun to catch. Okay, everybody. So today turned out not to be too bad of a day. Landed two bass, lost one bass, caught a bluegill. The GoPro died, so I missed out on that. But the big thing of the day, I'm fishing here. And I walk up to a bush and I see what looks like a piece of a uh, rod. So I go and I investigate. It's a whole rod setup rod reel it's got a bobber it's got a swivel it's got a little number six snell hook on it and to tell you the truth i don't see nothing wrong with it i don't know why it was left here but it's going into my arsenal and you know i don't like using the word challenge but I'm going to use that to fish in an upcoming episode. So you're going to want to watch that. It's actually um, a spin cast, which I don't 
used spin cast. I haven't used spin cast for a long time, but it's a, it's a spin cast. It's actually pretty smooth. I, I don't even know why anybody would leave it behind, but we'll be checking it out. We'll be doing some uh, multi-species fishing with it, you know, probably pan fishing, maybe a couple small bass or something. Nothing. I don't think we're going to get anything huge on it. One thing I've noticed, and maybe some people might want to take a look at what they got going on, but a lot of people use the wrong size bobbers for things. They over bobber their line. The, the problem with that is, I know why they do it. They do it so they can cast better. But the problem with that is if you get a fish and it can't pull that, that hook in, it's too much resistance from the bobber they're gonna let the hook go okay it's just like bottom fishing for carp when you have, to, you have to use a carolina rig when you use the carolina rig it gives the opportunity for the fish to pull the line and not feel the weight and not feel the the resistance when they have too much resistance they're gonna let go so if you're the kind of person that that's been using bobbers just take a look to make sure that you're using the right size bobber. I personally was one of those people. I learned it, and I found out that after I switched to smaller bobbers, I did better. That's all it takes. Just a little uh, information there.